Welcome to the link tonight. And we are discussing where will you go if the banks can't give you money, especially if you're a small and medium enterprise uh, venture. Tonight, we have special guests. But before I introduce them, uh, in a moment time, I will introduce the, uh, our guests and we'll continue with the discussion. Welcome back to the link. Tonight, uh, Richard Bialgaba, uh, MD, NSSF, everybody knows you. And uh, William Nyakatura, a stockbroker with African Alliance. So we're discussing the alternative to the banks. And there's this animal we discussed last week called IFRS 9. We won't discuss that today. But that means banks won't lend easily. So let's start with you, William. This animal called equity, equity financing, what is it? Thank you, sir. Um, private equity is a form of investment where the business has outlived family injection. Let's say you've started a business and you have gone around asking your uncles and your aunties to take a share in this particular business. And you believe that now you need additional capital to extend. You may want to expand, but you probably don't want to let go. You don't want to take on debt. But you could find that there is an entity that shares your same goals, your same vision, and they could actually give you an extended line, uh, and then they could take up a stake or percentage in your business. So line means they sink money in your business? Yes, they do. And what do they ask for back in return? Well, they would, of course, expect a return on their investment, what we call ROI. And they hope that they would also get paid dividends or profitable dividends as you also capture market share and as you become a bigger influencer in your society mm -hmm. where you're providing. So in effect, you seed shares. Yes. And then this guy or this institution comes, sinks in money and joins your, your management. Yes, but you would also want to control how much of what you, you, know, you pass on to him. Mm -hmm. That's, of course, very vital that you get a fair value of what you're going to give out, but then you're also hoping that you get a good seeded capital into your business to help you run the next mileage. We'll come back to the advantages. Richard, I know NSSF has attempted to be an equity investor. What happened? We haven't attempted to be an equity investor. We are an equity investor. Um, today we have a portfolio of uh, 96 trillion shillings and of that 1.6 trillion shillings is invested in equities mm -hmm. so we are equity investors in um, very many companies on the Uganda Stock Exchange we are equity investors in the private uh, companies mm -hmm. for example we are shareholders in the Serena Hotel yeah. um, and that's private equity we are private equity shareholders uh, in housing finance bank but we've also got a lot of uh, stock that we've invested in uh, outside of uh, Uganda, uh, within the East African region, uh, in Kenya. We are one of the largest shareholders in uh, Safaricom. We are largest shareholders, one of the largest shareholders in KCB Bank. Um, we are largest shareholders in, uh, you know, Trigger Cement in Tanzania. So we are quite uh, a big part uh, of uh, uh, shareholders uh, within the companies. I know those are big names, but I want to take a leave from, from that. When you decide to invest in a company, what are you looking for? What, what do you consider to make a decision? Well, first of all, the company must be a profitable company. Mm -hmm. um, that's, that's very important. Number two, uh, they must have um, uh, a good market share because obviously they're going to make profit out of their market share mm. so we've got to look at that but I think most importantly company must have good corporate governance um, they must be ready to disclose everything uh, we know that uh, corporate governance means that they must have a good management team they must have a good strategic uh, plan yeah. uh, which enables them to capture that market share they must be able to provide us with uh, enough assurances mm. that the company we're investing in is certainly going to not lose our money but is going to attempt to give us a good return uh, uh, the one uh, that William mentioned so definitely uh, that must be there and also there must be liquidity okay. um, 
because liquidity you mean what uh, well liquidity is money there must be money there must be right? cash flow yeah because a, a lot of a lot of companies can sell based on uh, on credit mm. but uh, if there's no cash flow to mm. pay out the dividends if there's no cash flow uh, to to basically invest uh, in in the business uh, then um, uh, basically we will not be uh, attempting to invest so those are the things we need to look at um, uh, to make sure that there is a good return and that the you know, workers' money is safe, okay. and we've not put it in a venture which will not be able to give us a good return. And I know you, yours, those, yours are high stakes because it's workers' money. Absolutely, William. I'm a guy. I have my money. I want to invest in a company, a smaller one. Yes. How should Ugandan can uh, smaller, smaller Ugandan companies? What should they do to attract um, guys who have their money, maybe institutions? Again, the same things that Richard actually talked about, mm. that you've got to actually work on the soft issues. You've got to have good corporate governance. So what do you mean corporate governance? Corporate governance is that you're not the only sole individual that makes the decisions of the business, that there is um, sound uh, management that comes to the decision making that mm. is beyond one particular individual okay. and entrepreneur. Mm. Then you've also got to be in a profitable business. Let's assume you're in a sector that is dying in its very self and you can see the revenues are dropping. That's not going to attract many people to that particular business. If we see that there is a likelihood that people are going to be attracted to this particular product line and you maybe have first advantage and it's a young business, mm. you're going to attract a fair number of PE firms or private equity firms to look at can he be the one to actually provide this service to them profitably. And then again, like he said, we would also want to see that your books of accounts are in order and disclose everything to us uh, openly mm. uh, because it's also a game of trust and we will then come in and sit in with your business and help you actually achieve your goal. So it really is corporate governance, market share and open disclosure of how you're actually going to do it and where are you at this particular moment. Yeah. Well, let me, let me, before, I leave, before I come back to Richard, so let me say I take equity money, I am looking good and I take the money. What's the advantage to me? Because now mm. uh, you are into my space, you're even going to make some rules on me. What's the advantage? They are, they, a quick, I think a quick advantage is that where you're soft in certain issues, they tend to actually bolster those particular areas. Mm -hmm. If you couldn't afford an accounting system or pay for an accountant in its very self, those are the issues they will come in and cover for you. Mm -hmm. Where you couldn't do market research, those are areas where we want to actually take our you know, skill set to try and make sure that we target this particular client with a little bit of mathematical approach yeah. to winning this particular game. So we would leave I think a PE firm would leave you to achieve your goal, mm -hmm. but with a more calculated approach. And hence, when the return comes, it's almost predictable and bankable. Yeah. Uh, yeah, uh, I also think that uh, one of the advantages to, to your company mm. is, is um, you no longer have to go to the market mm. to raise debt, mm. right? Because what is happening is that debt uh, is uh, a cost to the business. Absolutely. Um, when you take a, de a loan from a bank, they'll give you an interest rate, and that goes straight out of your PL Absolutely. and L. However, when uh, mm. you get you raise capital, mm. that money becomes part of your operating uh, you know, ex your, what you'd call your working capital, mm -hmm. and uh, basically uh, the return that you pay to the shareholder is through dividends. So that is after you've met all your expenses. Mm -hmm. So it does reduce the cost of expenses. Absolutely. But the other thing that, that I think for me is, is quite important uh, for a business that uh, takes on either private equity or even public equity mm -hmm. is is the whole rigor that it brings to your business. Rigor, you mean what? Rigor, in other words, the order, the, 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 the corporate government structure so you've got to they have a board you. yes basically mm. they, they shape you up mm. right they give you some of the things that you might not even have thought about right uh, the other one is obviously the whole issue around innovation yeah. um, because you've had you've had this family business that you've run it's been running well you know you are you are not very ambitious you've mm. got a strategic plan but you get in these guys who are much more um, who've got a bigger ambition who've got more skills uh, who've got who are looking at the bigger picture yeah. who are coming in with new ideas on innovation so these are being introduced to within the company they're giving you structure they're giving you policies mm. you know they're giving you HR practices that you've never looked at you know so all these things help the business value come. to you. yes absolutely how in, in personal businesses there's this issue of emotionality yeah. mm. William speak about emotionality I've had I cannot change the name I love the money but I can't change the name 
how does somebody go around that? What must you think about to, to get around the fact that I'm called um, Richard and Company, whatever, and I, I need to change to get money in? I'm guessing you've got to look forward beyond you, you yourself mm -hmm. and see that will, will, this, will this business actually survive me mm -hmm. and will it extend to another generation? And I think the question that many entrepreneurs struggle that all of a sudden I'm giving away a piece of my pie and he's thinking the pie is going to get smaller mm -hmm. but it actually gets larger when it serves a bigger market. Let us assume I come from another market that is similar to your product that mm -hmm. you offer here to Uganda and I want to penetrate into Africa and then I realize you understand the politics, the geographical location, the relationship game. It is very easy for me then to have you take that module when it works in Uganda into another country. Okay. So yes, there is that perception that you will actually feel a sense of fear, mm. but there's also an opportunity that comes with choosing the right partner who also is looking to grow with you and open you to new markets and give you economies of scale, which are efficiencies that he might already have. Is, is every PE person a uh, private equity investor a good one, even okay. if they have the money? Again, you've got to choose the private equity partner selectively. There are some that come with only money, there are others that come with expertise in areas that you are seeking. Mm -hmm. So every business that is looking to go to private equity uh, should actually choose one that comes not more than just money. Yeah. It's the other additional benefits that you can come with, you know, aside from capital. Mm -hmm. uh, that actually helps you go a long way. Capital is, capital is great but the other skills that you have could take me much further. Okay, and Richard, advisory. Many companies in Uganda may not qualify. Yes. So, are we going to let our hands drop? No, I don't think we can do that. Uh, in fact, um, I think the biggest fear for many of our companies, mm -hmm. as you, as William and yourself sort of correctly touched on, mm -hmm. is the fear of losing control. Mm -hmm. right? Identity. That, that, that's what kills many of our businesses. But also, most of our business do not want to disclose what's going on, right? So typically they'll have books for the bank, yeah. they'll have a book for the for the for the tax man, mm -hmm. they will have a, a, a book for uh, NSSF. They will have a book for themselves, Which so they know the actual position. Purpose. Yeah, mm -hmm. so there will be a, a book, and, and, and that and that tends to create uh, a problem for the business because then you're not disclosing everything. Mm -hmm. There are things that you want to hide from the public, and so on, and so forth. Mm -hmm. So I think that fear of losing, I think, is is the biggest one. And I think that if our businessmen were able to overcome that fear mm -hmm. and look at the positives that come with uh, uh, allowing in uh, private equity partners that would be great okay. I think the, the other issue is obviously the the professionals that you need you need um, somebody to do evaluation yes because obviously what you're doing is you're selling a story of your business mm. and what you what you're doing is that you're offering that value to the person who is coming in yeah. they've got to give you a price for the particular a good price mm -hmm. a good price mm -hmm. right and many people use that as a way of either paying off their debt or actually leveraging getting value out of it so mm -hmm. that they can allow more people to share on the risk yeah. uh, of the business um, but um, there will be professionals who will help you in uh, the accounting organize side. Your affairs yes, organizing so your affairs. Yes, organizing your affairs. So that you can even yes. Lawyers, yes. right, looking at some of the contracts you've been able to do, yeah. uh, looking at your memos and articles of association within yeah. the business, yeah. um, looking at your, you know, the, the, the entire way. Because at the end of the day, you'll end up with something called a prospectus, and that's the document that you actually go out and sell with. Okay. And, um, you know, you need a professional to put all that together. It's a thicker discussion. We have only scratched the surface, but it gives opportunity to you, Ugandans, if you are entertaining ideas of looking elsewhere apart from the banks. That was the link tonight, and after the break, we'll come back to Rachel. Are you in?